What is happening, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We are out here at Alex Clark once again. I think the last time I played this course, we had Paul, the uh, living local legend bear out here. We have a tournament coming up this weekend and the course is set up for the tournament. They call it AC Golds. They have, I believe four, one, two, three, four, no, they have five. They have five holes out here and then you go in and they've combined a handful of holes. So if you haven't yet watched uh, the previous video, I'll put a little card up here or something so you can go watch it and see what the course normally looks like and then what the course looks like now. And then also if you haven't, I've been posting some recaps of my tournament play out at Idlewild and I'll put those down in the description down below and the cards up there. Definitely check those out. If you want to watch this one first or those, you can kind of see where the form has been taking place. I've been working a lot, especially on the forehand form to try to get more of a disc golf throw versus an ultimate Frisbee throw. And if you're curious about exactly what I mean by that, uh, we can maybe do a video in the future. But we're here, hole number one, it's 250 feet. The basket right now isn't actually set up where it's going to be. It's gonna be a little bit more to the left and a little bit further, OB is long. So you just wanna throw something in there that's gonna sit down. Um, and yeah, we're just gonna throw a couple shots. We're just gonna do like a little bit of a tournament preview, I guess. This tournament's at three different courses. It's gonna be at Alex Clark Gold, Town Lake across the street, and then BB Owen. So it's another tournament where you play three rounds, one at each course. Just over the basket. I'm gonna to try to miss these two left. I've been missing on this basket. I've been missing always to the right. I'm gonna see if I can miss left. Be left of both, both of these shots. That one should be left. That's gonna be pretty much parked on where I think the basket's going to be for the tournament. I'm going to do the same thing, but a little more height to bring it in. That's it. That should be left and pretty money. Yep. All right, let's make some putts. All right, we got a couple shots here. And you can see too, this is a little bit more of how my tournament prep is going to be. Uh, like I talked about, I don't know if I talked... When did I talk about it? I might have talked about it in the follow-up. If you guys aren't Patreon members with Foundation Disc Golf, check that out. Link is in the description. We do uh, kind of live streams every week. We call it the follow-up. It's a good way of kind of just talking to me, Paul, Hunter, and Trevor. And we basically just tell, we not only give kind of like updates of what's coming and whatnot, but we also kind of give a little bit more intel of what we've been up to and one of the things this is where the basket's going to be for the tournament so that's perfect this is exactly I mean, it's kind of a little bit deep but that's fine but one of the things that i've been working on differently for this tournament is just how I'm, my preparation. So I felt like I was pretty prepared for Magnolia because of how I only got two practice rounds out there and both practice rounds were non-scoring rounds. I think that is key, non-scoring rounds. I had no idea expectation wise coming in what I could shoot. I didn't know if four under was gonna be a good score or 10 under or 11 under, I just knew these holes I can birdie, these holes I'm playing for par, and I stuck to that game plan. The tournament that I had this past weekend where we played another local tournament here in Dallas, we played three, I would say probably shorter courses. I played so many scoring practice rounds. So out here, I'm throwing tons of shots, throwing tons of putts, and not really paying attention to what my score is. I'm just trying to hit lines and get comfortable and get a lot of shots in. The last tournament, I think just doing a lot of scoring rounds and shooting really well, 
it kind of gave me an expectation of, hey, I need to shoot a 46 or I need to shoot a 47 on these courses. And I didn't really honestly do that much field work. And that's the difference this week, this week is I'm doing a lot more field work and I'm throwing a lot more shots. I'm not really playing scoring rounds, but hole two here, 270 feet. You can see the basket just right. That tree is kind of my aiming point on the left-hand side. It's about 25 feet short. So even if you hit the tree, you're still inside circle and have a good chance at birdie. I go get freaky forehand and I basically try to throw it just right there. If it flexes out to the left and then skips in, I'm fine. If it fades out early, I'm also fine. So either one I'm happy with, but I basically just try to throw something flat right at that tree. And even though that was pretty much terrible, I still have a putt there. I kind of slipped a little bit. Getting a little humid out here. Got to make sure I turn it just ever so slightly. It can't come out hyzer. It has to come out with a little turn. That's pretty good right there. That should skip right to the basket. Yep, that's money. Let's do one more of those. I just have to remind myself this needs a little turn out of the hand. A little turn out of the hand. Yep, and that's another one. Skip right, and that's I'm fine with that. It didn't really get that much skip. The wind kind of knocked it down, but that's a putt. This looks to be just, just outside a circle. It's close. We're going to play it as it's just outside, like 34 feet. See if I can get my step putt dialed in here. Up. Nope. Up. Nope. That's one that I need to figure out if I want to step that or if I want to just do a hard putt. The orange one was absolutely money. I'll take this literally every round. By every round, I mean the first round. We're only playing this course once. And then the blue one never kind of got pushed down by the wind. All right, not too bad. These first couple holes, they're all pretty gettable. You'd like to try to get a couple birdies here to start. Hole three here is a little par three. You've got a couple options off the tee. It's kind of buried back there in a bunch of trees. So I don't know if there really is a play. There's one throw here that you can kind of throw a flex backhand through that you can actually see the line and try to form it. And I'll show you that in a second. But I think the play is just to throw something understable up through this big gap here and then just have it fade uh, or have it turn to the right rather and just try to get some so something inside a circle. There's not really a line there. It's just you kind of have to throw and hope it doesn't hit anything. So I've got my fierce. This is uh, one of the more understable putters out there. So I can throw this one on like a little ante and it'll just keep that angle all the way to the basket. Kind of like that. Yep, and that is going to be short, but that's kind of in the spot I want it to be. All right, we're going to go meteor, mid. Just going to push this big gap. Basically the same exact throw as the putter, but it should get a little bit more distance. That felt really good out of the hand. And it's up there somewhere. If it turns out of it and slides up. Yeah, that's exact. I mean, that's under the basket. I just think that shot, you probably have a better chance of getting it parked, but you also have a really good chance of hitting an early tree. So I'll stick with the Paige Pierce Fierce shot. So this is definitely the tournament play, the fierce here. 
And this is pretty much about as good as it's gonna be. I mean, I might get a little bit more of a skip up, but I'm gonna be left with a 25 to 30 footer and you just gotta make them. And then if you, I mean, obviously this get freaky would be great, but again, I think it just puts a little bit too much trouble into play. And the same thing with the Meteor over here is that higher speed, it's going to be able to get me up near the basket. But now I, you know, run the risk of if it doesn't hit anything, this is technically is in bounds, but you know, there's a chance of this going OB. Scared you a little bit? You gotta know I'm cash money from that distance, Janice. That's a garage putt all day. And yes, we're working on getting Janice a mic so she can add to the conversation so you guys just don't have to listen to my voice the entire video. Hole four, 300 feet, but I think it plays a little bit more than that. It's a little uphill, and a lot of times this will play into a decent headwind. You got OB Street. I think this is OB Short. Ideally, you shouldn't be throwing into that. Um, but the basket just kind of sits out there. So there's a, there's a shot that I've been really working on a lot. I've been trying to get really dialed in with these Raptors. Um, you know, just a, I'm not too comfortable throwing a, a flick buzz or a Malta. I want to maybe try the drone out a little bit cause it's a little bit more stable, but the Malta and the buzz for forehand, a little bit too touchy for me. I like something that I can kind of rip on a little bit that can hold the torque. And that's kind of the raptor. So let's see how this goes. Just gotta throw it. That's the key. I threw it. It's all about whether or not I get to skip. It doesn't, but that should be just outside a circle. Got two more here. These are a little bit more overstable, so these will come back a little bit more to the right. Oh, if it didn't hit that tree, it might still be all right. If it didn't hit that tree, it was gonna be really good. All right, last raptor here. Get it a little bit underneath the tree, right at that light. I kind of pulled that one too. Fortunately, none of those were very good. And I don't really have another dislike it, but we'll go disc up, we'll throw a force. I want to just get, I just want to hit the line, get the line once. All right, we got some putts. All right, didn't do a great job here. Don't really have a great look, but they're all basically right outside a circle or circle's edge. Oh, this is where the putting can uh, definitely save you some strokes, allow you to not have to, you know, park every single shot. But this is a hole that, you know, there's not too much in front of you. So you would like to have a decent look at it. But this was my first shot. And honestly, I'll take this. It didn't really get that great of a skip. I kind of yanked it to the left a little bit. But at the end of the day, there's no pictures on a scorecard. All right, we have made it to hole four. Oh no, there's five. Yeah, you're right. Oh my gosh, hole five. And I think this plays as one of the more difficult holes on the course, mainly because of the OB that they've put. I'm not a huge fan of the OB. I think it's already a hard hole and I don't think they needed to add any OB, but the sidewalk on the left is OB, the street on the right is OB street behind is OB, so it's pretty much an island. And then you see, can see kind of like the indentations. What, what would you call that? Dip? Valley? Cre uh, what do you call that? It's where people, it's where you go when like um, there's a tornado. You sit in the middle of that. What is that called? A ditch. There's a ditch in front of the hole and that's all OB as well. So 
Uh, I don't think you need the OB in the ditch, but they have it. The play here is, it's like 400 foot hyzer. So you just basically throw it as hard as you can and hyzer it and hopefully you're in bounds. If it's deep enough, that's good. All right, we're safe. Throw one more. You gotta really yank it to get it there. This is actually kind of a big rip. I actually don't even know how people are gonna play a layup here. And what's the wind doing? Left to right? That's not helpful. That needs to get left in a hurry. Get left in a hurry. And it's stuck in a tree. Going Z force. I think that I think the ESP is just a little bit too understable. Got to go most stability here. That should be good. If it's got the distance. Yeah, that's money. All right, these are both shots that I would take every time. Anything that gives me a look would be perfect. The OB comes up right here. This is OB. All this. There's a little area over there that's not OB, but pretty much this is all OB. So you got to make sure you really push. And honestly, I think the miss is deep left because then you just have a tap in par. You know what I think about OB that's tap in par, but you got to use it to your advantage when you can. Oh, biscuit eater. Not today, Junior. See if I'm better from four feet closer. That's low, but it stayed up. Those are better strokes. Better strokes for different folks. All right, we have made it to hole six, 270 feet. This is actually hole one on the normal course layout. Basket's just up there. You can't let this tree get in your head. That's the biggest thing. You just gotta be locked into your line. Don't worry about that tree. For me, being as tall as I am, I'm actually kind of blinded by where I wanna hit because of the tree. But I just go jawbreaker zone, a little bit less stable than my get freaky. I kind of just try to throw it flat straight down with a little finish at the end to the right. Just like that. Finish right, finish right, there it goes. And that's a putt. We got a little deep. I turned it a little bit too much out of my hand, but again, we got a putt from 20. All right. Next hole is a doozy. Wait for it. A little bit of breezy wind coming in. We're on hole seven. It's hard to see from this angle. If you come out here a little bit, you can kind of poke, actually coming over here, you can kind of see exactly the lane that I'm trying to throw my next shot. It's about 320. I think it plays a little bit further than that, honestly, because you're having to kind of, it's 320 straight at it, but you're having to kind of throw something out. So I'm going to say it's almost like a 340 shot. I'm going with a buzz, wind at my back, it's gonna push it even more to the left, which I'm okay with. With it being this windy, I think the main goal is just get something across. So I'm gonna aim kind of right at that notch and just hopefully have it push to the left, get up by the basket somewhere, make a putt. Oh, just like that. Just like that. Soft, soft, soft. Yep, that's fine. Kind of got a weird kick at the end, but I'll take it. I'm only throwing one shot here. Main reason, because it is not very difficult to hit one of these trees and go in this water. And if you've ever played at Alex Clark before, you know you don't want to be in the water. Honestly, not a terrible spot. Like I said, it kind of got a weird kick. I think it hit this tree and shot a little bit left. But I have a putt at it. Just outside, circle, wind at my back, it's gonna drop. Make sure you give it a good little Kevin Jones ump. 
Wow, no chains needed. And that one's off to the right. All right, that's fine. One for two from there, not bad. So a helpful tip that I've found when preparing for tournaments, go through the course, figure out the best shot that you can pull off and go with that. You shouldn't be trying to learn a new shot to prepare for a tournament. You don't have enough time. So figure out what's the best shot for you to do. Then write those, you know, write it all down in your notepad or whatever. And then that way, when you go back out to practice, you know exactly all the discs that you need and put doubles or triples of those discs in your bag and take everything else out. So for me, I throw a lot of Raptors. I throw a lot of zones. I throw a lot of Zeus's on this course. So I'm throwing two, three extras of those discs. So when I come out here, I can practice those shots multiple times instead of just throwing the one disc that I am gonna throw in the tournament and be like, that's it. But then also hole eight, this is a perfect example of a hole where there's two lines for you to take. And I'm not sure if they're actually gonna put a Mando here. I'm not entirely sure. It would make sense for them to make a Mando. But as of right now, there is no Mando. This is a par four. I have no idea how far it is. It's like 550, 600 feet or so. But it's all the way down here. If you come out here, you can see it's all the way down, all the way at the very, very end. Can you see it from there? Here, right here. You can see it from right here. It's all the way through there. So there's two plays off the tee. The first one is like a forehand down this uh, gap and then have it finish off to the right. The other play is a backhand out over the street. And this is where I don't know if they're gonna make like this tree right in front of us, a Mando left. So I'm gonna practice both shots. One's a little bit more comfortable than the other. One's a little bit easier, but th these are the type of holes that, you know, great practice to throw what you're gonna throw in the tournament, which is going to be this disc and this disc, or this disc. So I'm gonna throw my shot that I'm gonna do in a tournament, which if there is no Mando, I'm going out wide with the backhand. I just think it's an easier shot. But then I'm also going to work on another shot, which is throwing it through here. And we're just gonna to have to time up these cars and I'm just gonna to have to throw a good shot. I might only be able to do one of these because of the car situation. I think we're good. That's pretty much money. If there's no other cars, after this car, I can throw one more of those. I think I'm good. Once that car leaves, yep. Throw one more of these. That should be good as well. Ooh, nice tree save. And then I can throw two of the forehands to practice this shot, because this is a good one to have. Get around it. Ah, didn't flip up. I didn't throw it too much hyzer. Gotta throw it flat. Yeah. Oh, that's beefy. Oh, I got hit by that and hit by that, but that's still okay. I'm gonna throw one more actually. So those are both a little bit of a flippy Zeus. This one's more of my overstable one. So I'm gonna throw this one a little bit more Anheuser off the hand, have it turn a little bit more left and then finish hard right. That's a disc golf forehand right there. That is what I'm talking about. Uh. Gotta love that. This is like the uh, little flex shot here. Just gotta hit my line out of the hand. Sit down, sit. That's fine, that's a, that's a putt. These are where the back ends ended up. Just gonna try to jump putt this one. <laughs> Oof. 
get left. Yeah. I haven't really been working on my jump putt. Uh, that I think would be the next step. I've been really trying to hone in the 30 feet to 40 feet, putt, 30, 30 feet to 40 feet. That's the putt that is kind of been killing me. All right, we're gonna throw this one up high. It's a good layup. But yeah, these two forces, this is probably gonna be my play in the tournament as long as there's no Mando. It just feels like as long as I don't hit the curb coming in, I'm gonna be money. And then the forehand here, I mean, if I can do this every time, obviously, why not? But I'll try and make this. Ooh, just behind it, just behind it. Yeah, it's a, uh, I wouldn't really call this a soft par four because it does require a pretty good tee shot. And then depending on where you end up, you still have to make a decent upshot uh, with the trees and stuff. But I don't wanna to get too aggressive off the tee because like I said, being here or being back there 100 feet, you should still be able to get up and down. Hole, I believe is hole nine. Yeah, hole nine, 300, hole nine is 390 feet. One of my favorite holes on the course. I mean, <laughs> not Kelsey, she said, but one of my favorite, because it requires a really, really good forehand. I'm not entirely sure how the heck you would get here with a backhand. I mean, I'm sure it's somehow possible of throwing something super flippy and delicate but it seems like it's a flex forehand all day. Just gotta miss that big tree in the middle and then have it slide on in at the end. Gotta make sure I give it good height and then good turn out of it by hand. I'm going with my overstable Zeus here. That's too high. That needs to get down. Should be okay, but it was just too high out of my hand. I always forget on this hole, I need to remind myself to not throw crazy high. Did I put another force in here, or Zeus that is? Oh, here we go, okay. Because the play here, the miss is to miss left. You don't want to miss right like I just did. So I need to make sure I throw lower and try to turn it too much. There, if it misses that tree, that's the shot. Oh, late tree, but I'm okay with it. I miss throwing those two. I only have two stable Zeus's, so that's what I got. So this is why you want to miss left because it gets a little scary over here. I gotta make sure I remind myself in the tournament, throw low, make sure you, the mistake is overturned. But we got an outside look at it here from about, oh, 70, give or take. Get left. I'm okay with the distance there. The line was kind of off. This one I think would have scooted up into circle. It just needed to miss this last tree right here. And I think it would have ended up being about 30 feet or so. And this is a hole that when I get to it in the tournament, I'm not too upset with the three. I think it's a very difficult, challenging shot off the tee. I mean, it requires someone to have a 400 plus forehand. So I'm not too upset with a three, but if I can get a look at two, I'll take it every time. Turn left. Ooh, all right, a little tester on the back. 
to finish off the front nine here. All right, two to make it true. Doesn't count unless I make both of these. Finish strong, take a step back, make it a little more challenging. All right. Well, there you have it, the front nine out here at Alex Clark Gold's getting ready for the McKinney Classic. If you wanna check out how I'm doing, I think they might have live scoring. I'm not entirely sure, but if not, make sure you check in the Discord. They will know if there's live scoring or not. If you haven't joined the Discord, the link is in the description down below. Go over to foundationdiscgolf.com, get all your favorite discs and all that stuff. And uh, that's it for the front nine. We'll see you guys in the back nine, part two. Keep slinging them discs.